Is one of your goals for yourself or your athletes and the next goal to get under three hours for the marathon? If so, I'm going to give you three long run options that you can use. Now, you know it's a well-balanced training program, obviously, um, is, is, is uh, a good thing and you recommend it. And if you're getting, you know, shoot for a three-hour marathon, you probably have a decent amount of running experience, whether it's be from previous marathons or if you're moving up to the marathon from the half marathon or whatever it is, um, it requires, you know, a pretty well-rounded uh, training program. So, and I'm going to put in the description down below a detailed, a fully detailed sub-three-hour marathon training program and sub-three-hour uh, marathon workouts. Uh, also, take a look down below. I'm also going to have sub-four-hour long run options, sub-330 long run options with this today, and then my next video, which you're not going to miss, is going to be sub-230 long run marathon options, okay? So keep that in mind. And by the way, I'm Coach Jason. Um, I have competed and coached at the high school, college, and post-collegiate level. I'm a USATF certified track and field coach. You look at uh, the YouTube pro, uh, pro profile for my credential. I'm also a Wharton certified musculoskeletal and flexibility therapist. So I'm not only here to help make you faster, but to keep you healthy while you do it, okay? So with that said, let's go over these three types of long runs, okay? Um, long runs are obviously very important. Let me give you some pace ranges first, okay? I've set things up for a, a 259.30, okay? Um, to give you 30 seconds, a little bit of a little bit of cushion on the back end, um, just for these for these paces here, okay? So marathon pace will be 650 per mile, okay? For 259.30, your easy runs, okay, are eight between 820 and 750 on easy days, okay? Um, steady run pace, which is a little bit more fa a little bit faster, 750 to 720 per mile. Okay, those are also important tra training runs as well. Now, half marathon equivalent based on this will be 634 per mile. Okay, that's if you can run 634 per mile for a half marathon, chances are you're going to be pretty close to running 650 for the marathon if you're fit enough. Okay, 10k equivalent is 615 per mile. Uh, 5k equivalent 602 per mile. Okay, and 90 to 95 percent. Of marathon paces, 731 to 710 per mile. I bring these paces up because there's a lot of them are included in these long runs or, or paces that should be implemented in training. And you'll see those pace, paces in my actual detailed training programs. And there's 16 week completely laid out and explained day by day, week by week, month by month. So you don't miss any details. Okay. So number one long run, 18 to 22 mile uh, long run. At this point, you probably have a decent uh, amount of base, and you're probably decent uh, running a decent volume. My personal recommendation, I've said this in other videos, is to not approach 20 miles for a long run unless you're running at least 60 miles per week. Okay, even though it's a third of the volume, ideally you want it to be about 20% to 25% of the weekly volume, and then you can have a, a, a midweek run that's maybe 15%. So if you're running a 20 mile long run, you can also have a long run in the middle of the week that's like 13 or 14 miles. That's just a steady pace to get you off keep you on your feet for a long period of time. Just something to keep in mind as a semi-long run. You'll see it in my training programs. So 18 to 22 mile long run at 90 to 95%, which is something that you repeat a few times. So you can go 18, 20, 22, however you lay things out. I do recommend if you're going to run 20 miles that you uh, that you find a way or maybe see if you can fit in two 20 mile long runs, particularly if you're trying to break three hours. Okay, 90 to 95%, like I said, it's 731 to 710 per mile. Two of these. Okay. Number two, a progression or half and half, okay? Progression, obviously, is where you just gradually get faster, okay? Um, and you go from uh, essentially with 820, which is the uh, the high end of the easy pace, all the way down to 650 or slightly faster, which is marathon pace, okay? Or you can do a half and half, meaning you can run half to, half to, half to run between easy and steady, okay? That range, and then the other half at marathon pace. And ideally, you want to know you can run 10 miles at marathon pace at any point in time, okay? That's And you don't have to do, you can lay this out in a couple ways, okay? You can lay out, say if it's 20 miles, you can do the first 10 steady or easy and the second 10 at marathon pace. You can do the first 10 at marathon pace, the second 10 easy or steady. You can do five easy steady, 10 at marathon pace, and then five on the back end so that you teach your body what it feels like to run marathon pace in the beginning, in the middle, and the end, Okay? You know what it feels like. You want to know what marathon pace feels like at the end, especially around the 20 or past 20 mile mark, because that's when things start to change uh, physiologically for you and physically. If you've seen the marathon, it's 20, 20 miles is a tough threshold, and then that's when things start to can shut down. So keep that in mind. So progression or a half and half, okay? Um, maybe one of each. Uh, long run. This is the third one. 
long one would VO2 max miles. Okay, so let's say you have a, an 18 mile long run. Okay, um, well let's say I actually give you two options. Let's say you have a 16 mile long run and you're working your way up to the long ones. You put four VO2 max miles in there. And VO2 max pace for here is 610 to 605 per mile. So it's a right around 5K pace, or a little bit a little bit slower than 5K pace. It's a little faster than 10K, a little slower than 5K pace. So you run four of them with a 16 mile long run. You take a, an easy 800 meter jog throughout the run. So let's say it's a continuous run. You do a hard VO2 max mile, then you jog an 800. VO2 max mile, jog, and you do that four times, then you have six mile, a six mile block. And you can have five miles in the beginning, five miles in the end if you want, and you have 16 miles total. If you do an 18, you do five VO, VO2 max miles. Same pace. If you're doing a 20 mile long run, you do six VO2 max miles within that long run. Okay. You can also use this as a workout, VO2 max miles as well, where you just do a warm up, drills and strides, do the VO2 max miles, and so on and so forth. This just gives you an opportunity to kind of accelerate throughout a long run and throw some different variety in there. This is a little bit more challenging, but with that said, because it's significantly faster than marathon pace, um, it gives you another option, and you're not doing as many of them. So, again, you have your long run at 90 to 95%, which I highly recommend, at least one. Um, you have your progression, your halves and halves, and then you have your long run with VO2 max miles in it. So, those are the three options. Let me know what you think. If you, if, if you find these helpful, please click the thumbs up. And by, if you're an athlete or a coach and you, want, you just want to see a lot of detailed uh, training programs, workouts galore, everything from 5K all the way up to the marathon, cross-country training programs, summer base training, which I'm also laying out now as well for high school and college every single year, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the notification next so you don't miss a bunch of videos that I'm going to be putting out moving forward. So be safe, okay? Train hard, train smart, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.